Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're talking about a lot of things involving DBS in 2020. We're talking about what I want to see for the game in 2020, what I'm excited about for the game in 2020, what some of the community wants to see for the game in 2020, and then I'm going to wrap the video up, guys, by telling you how to take advantage of Dragon Ball Super in 2020. I think this is a really good video to kind of get the year started off with in terms of just like setting things up, setting up goalposts, what we want to achieve as a game, and what we're aiming to do as a community. I think this is a good video to start that off with. Guys, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell. And finally, guys, and this is going to be a bigger talking point later, but we want to see you guys at the Daylight Mac Tournament of Power. It's really important for the community and the game, and uh, we want to see you there. I believe my team. I believe this is going to be the biggest event of the year. We want to see you there. With that being said, we're going to get started. So first thing off the bat, guys, so cool. We had the Dragon Ball Super Card Game World Championship announced at this past nationals what does this mean for the game well a lot of people like to say online if you if you follow the dragon ball super community online the community in general is one of the best communities I've ever been a part of and if you've been a part of other card games you can probably attest to that especially me personally i came from Yu-Gi-Oh, and i know a lot of my fellow people that came from Yu-Gi-Oh can attest to the dragon ball super just being like the best community out there but sometimes online people get a little bit uh a little toxic i'll just say it. they get a little bit toxic and you know people love to say the game's dying people love to say the game is going in an awful uh, awful direction and i've been critical of bandai in the past when like i didn't think they did celebrations as best they possibly could and i put out some uh kind of constructive criticism for how they could have maybe improved it but overall guys in the grand scheme of things i think bandai is doing an amazing job with the game they're very vocal with us they listen to our issues to our complaints with the game we get very detailed ban lists why they think things are bad what they heard from the community as as far as why cards are not healthy for the game and they're very vocal with us it's just i think it's a great relationship bandai to their to their card game community i think it works well and now we have the world championship being announced and i am so excited this is going to change the face of the game for dragon ball super 20, uh, in 2020 what people want to see what a lot of the big people in this community want to see is dragon ball super break the top three the top three card games being magic pokemon and Yu Gi Oh. and i'm one of those people i want to see this game become number one i want to see it break the top three and announcing our world championship with a huge big prize pool uh which we don't know the prize pool yet but it just the, the the scale of events is getting bigger and bigger and with the announcement of worlds in 2020 i think that the game is off to the races i think the game is going in the uh in the absolutely right direction next up organized play again last year 2019 organized play was not where it should have been and that was for a lot of reasons behind the scenes that i don't even know about a lot of people don't even know about i don't think it's fully fair to say you know bandai ruined the game in that sense you know the game is obviously still thriving like i just said we had the world the world's announcement but organized play in 2019 had a few issues they really went over the top with the dragon ball super celebrations which was an absolute amazing amazing event and you know people loved it but because of that at least this is one of the things that contributed to the 2019 op season the budget was a little bit stifened uh from that celebration experience so now one of the things i said a lot back then was you need to just let 2019 op happen you need to just let the season be over let it run its course and 2020 is going to be bigger and better and just from like what i'm showing you guys on the screen here this is one of the ways that i think dragon ball super op in 2020 organized play is going to be off the charts guys for top four you're getting one of these exclusive cards and this is this is one of the things right in the beginning of dragon ball super op back in like 2018 uh, a little bit in 2017 people didn't want to go to events unless there was a reason to go to events they wanted cash prizing they wanted uh gaming systems they wanted things that they could translate into money or translate into value and it's hard to blame people when they are spending tons of money on rooms tons of money on flights spending time they could be working testing for these events you know it is a hobby but at the end of the day the competitive players they're coming out for the money that's kind of how it works and this op season coming up i am so excited for these prize cards are easily going to be worth a couple hundred dollars a piece. You can only get them if you top for the regional, at least as far as we know right now. And that means these are going to be worth money. So just right off the bat, Bandai does not have to compromise their, their money thing. They don't love giving out money for events. We've gotten uh, gift cards. We've gotten flight vouchers in the past, but they don't love giving out money. And this is their way to circumvent that. You give out these exclusive prize cards that look awesome, by the way. And that's the kind of the thing with prize cards. If they don't look that cool, no one's going to really be interested in them, and then they're not really going to sell. But these look sick and amazing. So these are going to sell for a few hundred a piece at least. Again, they're going to be very exclusive. There's only what? I think like uh, 
I, I don't want to lowball it, but I think it was like 8 to 10 to 12 regionals this season for OP in Dragon Ball Super. So there's going to be a very limited number of these out there in the world. And that's another great thing for the Dragon Ball Super card game in 2020 that I'm very excited for. I want to be more competitive. I want to do better and badder these events. I got, you know, badder in the sense that it's good. You know what I mean? But anyways, we're moving on. So one of the things that I think we can look forward to in 2020 that we're making an improvement on in the Dragon Ball Super card game the beloved draft box four so why do i have fearless pan here to represent draft box four so while i think draft box four was a good product it finally did the right thing in terms of making the srs all relatively good and playable for the most part and it gave the secondary market a good amount of value which is something that a lot of players want again if you're ultra casual or if you're um not so much in the competitive scene you might not care about the secondary market value of cards it might suck when you need a card for your deck but it's super expensive that is pretty unfortunate, but a lot of players, when they enter tournaments, when they enter a draft tournament, or when they enter a tournament at their locals, and they get regular packs, you want to buy a product in which the cards are going to have some, some type of value. And that also helps the game reach a longevity standpoint as well. It helps the game reach a legacy standpoint as well. Now, the problem with Draftbox 4 was they reprinted old cards, and they gave them the SR treatment. Fearless Pan, for example, was actually a really good reprint. The copies of Fearless Pan before the reprint were about $10 a piece. And that was a bit out of some people's price range. So it got reprinted in Draftbox. The price fell to about $5 per copy, which is what a, what a reprint is supposed to do. So that was good. But the problem was this took up an SR slot that people couldn't get the new SRs in, which made a lot of people upset. And rightfully so. What I want to see in 2020 is I want to see more reprints of cards, but I want to see them rarity downgraded to make them more easily accessible. And again, Bandai already improving with this. Draftbox 5 is going to be all brand new cards. That's a really cool thing. They didn't have to do that because they could have, like I said, they could have just, they could have reprinted the Carly Phyllis pan. They could have reprinted other SRs and just downgraded the rarity, made them uncommons, commons, whatever. But um, this works out really well. And again, we already see Bandai making those improvements going forward. So we know they're on the right track. That's something I want to see. And they did it well with the Mag Magnificent decks too. The Magnificent decks, they took high rarity cards like Height of Mastery and uh, Foo Shrouded and Mystery. They downgraded the rarity, made them much easier to get. So again, I think Bandai is already on the right direction. Now, guys, we're going to take a look at some of the stuff that the community wants to see from Dragon Ball Super in 2020. All right, guys. So our fearless leader here in the Dragon Ball Super community Facebook group, AAA, put a question up yesterday saying, Happy New Year's, everyone. What would you like to see happen in 2020 for DBS? We're going to go through the comments, read a few of them, and we're going to talk about them. Aid says, another magnificent collection with reprint DB4 cards. I can get behind this. Again, I, I said before, I like the Magnificent Collections a lot. They downgraded a lot of cards and made them much easier to get for budget players. And do I think they need to reprint all the Draftbox 4 cards? Not immediately, but it would be cool to see those Draftbox 4 cards get a rarity downgrade at some point because they are very hard to get. And unfortunately, that's not really going to change because Draftbox 4 is already set in stone the way that the pull rates are. Again, you can pull some of the old SRs and they're not nearly as valuable as the new SRs. So that can be kind of an issue. We have a comment here saying that we want cell to be freed, but guys, you have the new cell support to look forward to in set nine. And I think it actually looks pretty strong. So I'm pretty excited for that going into 2020. We have another comment saying a green PyCon, Namekian, other world leader. That would be so sick. PyCon's one of my favorite characters in Dragon Ball of all time. He's just such a BA when you get to uh, when you get to that saga where Goku's in other world and uh, PyCon is just one of his opponents and he gets to the Janemba movie. Man, that, that arc is a larger tournament in the Pacific Northwest. That'd be really cool too. One of the things that I would love to see with Dragon Ball Super in 2020, I mean, it's probably not gonna happen in 2020 because the OP season's already set in stone, but in the future, it'd be so cool to have a lot of mini regionals just take place all over the country. You know, coming from Yu-Gi-Oh! again, they do this all the time where they have tons of regionals in different states every single weekend. And this way, a lot of people can make it to the events. A lot of people can try and earn their invites to nationals. And the game just has these, these huge attendance numbers because local people are able to make it. You know, it is cool that the Dragon Ball Super Regionals are like an event. You know, you travel to them, you make travel plans, you go with your friends, this and that. But it is also cool to have those local regionals you can just drive down to with your local friends, your local card game players, and show them the experience of the Dragon Ball Super community. Because again, you know, we have the best community here. And it's really hard to get people to uh, see that sometimes when they don't have the events to travel to locally. So that is something I would like to see in the future. Again, unfortunately, not uh, not super soon, but hopefully going forward, we can see that happening. Isaiah wants to see green be a good standalone color. Uh, pretty much every other color he says we can play mono color, but like he wants to give green to stuff that KO is ignoring barriers so that it has its kind of its own niche. And I can totally see that. You know, we have a lot of good other mono color decks like mono red pan, mono black hatchiac, other things like that. And green has always kind of been the weakest color in Dragon Ball, you know, outside of like the veggie format, I guess you could say. 
Green hasn't been one of the, it has not had time in the spotlight yet. And it'd be cool for green to be standalone. Green's actually one of my favorite colors in this game. I love crit, I love hand control, I love board control. So that'd be really cool to see green get uh, a cool archetype that can kind of stand on its own. All right guys, now we're gonna talk a little bit about how to make DBS your own in 2020. Do what you wanna do in DBS, meet your goals. And forgive me for the new platform, I got a new camera. We're upgrading the channel all the time, so I appreciate you guys first and foremost for all the support. And through 2019 guys, through 2018, through the two years I've been doing this, man, I can't believe like how much support you guys have given me. And it's really just been like mind blowing. Like I can't even believe that I'm here doing what I'm doing right now. But guys, make DBS in 2020 your own. I get so many comments saying like, I haven't been to an event yet, but your videos are helping me learn the game, helping me prep for my first tournament. Go to that first local, guys. When I went to my first local for Dragon, or sorry, for Yu-Gi-Oh! back five years ago, my first ever local for a card game, I, I played in the local, got absolutely destroyed because I was playing like a super rogue deck, whatever, and I asked the guys there, they were talking about playing a basketball game afterwards. It was a summer, and I said, guys, can I come play basketball with you? And since then, I know these guys for five years, a lot of my really good friends that I go to my locals with, now we all play Dragon Ball Super together, and it's awesome. Guys, go to that local, go to that first local, introduce yourself, be friendly, because that's what the Dragon Ball Super community is all about, being friendly. Guys, if you wanna make a break into the Dragon Ball Super competitive scene, just go to an event, guys. A lot of my patrons especially, but a lot of the YouTube commenters as well, these guys tell me all the time, you know, I wanna get a little bit more competitive, I want, I wanna experience this Dragon Ball Super community you're always talking about, you gotta go to the events, you gotta get immersed. I've also met a lot of people at these events that they say it's their first event and they love the community. And that's what gets so many people coming back and back and back to all these events, guys. When you see people online on the Dragon Ball Super uh, Facebook group, you see Danny Hype, Marcus Cantarsi, Trey Faircloth, Eddie St. Hilaire, all these people you guys see there, man, they, they go to these events because of the community. It's not a money grab thing, it's not like a, a publicity thing, it's not a fame thing. It's the love of the game and love of the community, and that's really the best part about this game. So if you want to make Dragon Ball Super your own in 2020, guys, go to the events. That's how you can start being competitive. You got to go. Even if you run and hit your face in the ground, like a weird old saying, if you do that and you don't and you scrub out of your first event, that's okay because you can always do better. You can always improve. And that's what a lot of the community is here to help you for. That's what my channel is here for. That's what other channels like Eggman and Android are there for and tons of other YouTube channels. Make sure you guys are taking advantage of that in 2020. Speaking of competitive events, guys, one of the number one things I want for this game is to bring it as close to esports level as possible. Bring the prestige of trading card games in general, Dragon Ball Super specifically, up as high as possible. And that's one of the main reasons why I keep plugging the Daylin Mac Tournament of Power, guys. I'm not getting paid to promote it. This is not like a money grab thing again. Like, a Daylin is my boy. The Shenron Lair guys are my family. And guys, I believe in this tournament and we need to see you there. That's one of the ways we're gonna really bring Dragon Ball Super to the top. So one of the ways that I'm gonna make 2020 DBS my own is by doing every single thing I can for the Daylin Mac Tournament of Power, guys. Doing every single thing I can for the Dragon Ball Super community. Doing what I can to rise it up, bring it up, and uh, we're gonna have an amazing time in that tournament. So I can't stress enough, guys, how much we wanna see you there, and that's how I'm gonna make the most out of DBS 2020, is by helping grow this game as much as I possibly can. And if you guys wanna make DBS your own in 2020, if you wanna be more competitive, go to the events. If you wanna start playing the game at your locals, go do it. You just gotta start doing it. One of my friends, Logan, if you guys were here from day one of the channel, you would know who Logan is. He's, he really helped me create the videos and learn how to edit and learn how to you know do certain things on YouTube. He told me one time, when I went to go visit him, uh, he told me, you just gotta start doing it. You know, you wanna make videos, you gotta start doing it. You wanna be competitive in the Dragon Ball Super card game, you just gotta do it, guys. And I know it seems like simple advice, but you just gotta start doing it, man. Guys, again, thank you guys for all the love and support you guys have shown me for the past two years. I'm so excited for DBS in 2020. I'm so excited to be a content creator for all you guys in the Dragon Ball Super card game in 2020. Guys, thank you so much for being along this journey with me. I'll see you in the next video.